Okay, so this is for Engineering Design Week 5. Uh, we are going to be working on today is the CAM bracket. So looking at our Schoology page, we should be in the Week 5 folder. And underneath there, we're going to click on the angle arm <clears throat> and CAM bracket parts and drawings. Now, last uh, video I created was for the angle arm. This time it's going to be for the CAM bracket. So I'm going to take a look real quickly here at the cover page. to see what we're basically starting with here. Okay, so what it's saying is, is create the following part based upon the orientation of the coordinate systems in the picture below. So again, the emphasis on this part will be to actually create the part and then we're gonna add in three different coordinate systems. We wanna pay special attention to where these are located because you can see here, this one is a little bit off this corner and same with this one here. Okay, that indicates to me that these coordinate systems were added before the fillets were added on at the end. Okay, so we got to kind of put that as a note to ourselves to make sure we do this. Now, my approach on this one is I'm going to start from the right side view. Okay, I'm going to create basically a rough outline of this and get it all dialed in and dimensioned. And then from there, I'm going to go ahead and extrude it across and then begin to cut away. And I can get quite a bit uh, cut off in one step. I'm going to cut off this corner here and this angle here and these two holes. And then I'm going to punch a hole through this, this back part, punch a hole in the side, and then use my hole wizard to add those last two holes here. I will then go ahead and put my coordinate systems on, and I will finish with my feature fillets. Okay, now going back into our assignment, let's take a look at the drawing that actually came with this. And here's what we're working with. So again, what I'm going to do is focus on the right side view over here. I'm going to build this outline here without the rounds. All right, get this done and then we'll extrude it across a total distance of 133 millimeters. So we're going to be working with a metric part. So I'm going to go into my SOLIDWORKS here. I'm going to slide this over into my other view. I'm now going to go ahead into my SOLIDWORKS, do a file new, metric, and OK. Starting on my right plane, I will start a new script, left click, I'm going to start a new sketch. And I'm going to begin by putting this circle first. I'm going to do a construction circle. So what I'm going to do is draw a circle here and then make it for construction. The reason I'm doing this is I'm just going to do this for a temporary, uh, basically a reference point. If you look at the drawing, and I'll slide that back over here real quick. Oops. Okay, if you look at the drawing, everything's kind of centered off on this circle. Now this circle I don't want to put in there permanently because if I do an extrude across, it's going to be a hole all the way through. This is not going on through, through, it's only going in at 15 millimeters. So I'll add the hole on later, but I'm going to use the construction circle kind of as a holder, a placeholder. Just kind of so I can build around it and get everything dialed in. Okay, so slide this back over. I've got my construction circle there. I'm going to go ahead and dimension it to diameter 10 so I know it's the right size. And now from here, I can build around this circle. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a line tool. Uh, I'm going to kind of come off of here. I'm going to build that little shelf. I'm going to just kind of build off of there. That is kind of an important thing because we'll talk about that in just a second. Back this up at an angle. Coming downhill here a little bit. Uh, bring this up to about right about there. Kind of back at an angle kind of come over this way and close, okay? Now right away, one of the things I want to get squared away, and this is a question I get asked quite a bit on this problem, um, getting this point and this shelf lined up, if you look at the drawing over here, and I'll bring that back in, this line is right along here, along with this point. So I'm gonna use a horizontal relationship to get all of this tied to the center of the circle, okay? And that is a kind of a key thing to start right away with. So I'm going to take this endpoint in my origin and do a horizontal. I'm going to do the same on this back side. I'm going to hit that point, control key, the origin, and make it horizontal. Okay, so now these are all locked together. So now I can start working with my dimensions. So I'm going to go ahead and start adding things in. From here to here, I'm going to make that three millimeters. The angle between... Uh, this line and this line here, I'm going to pull up, will be 45 degrees. Actually, that worked out pretty well. So that's 45. Um, the distance from this point here to the front of the shelf 
uh, it's going to be 13. I'm going to kind of put these in the same spot as the drawing. There's 13. That's good. That turned black. That's a good sign. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is make this thickness down here. It's going to be 14. Okay. And then I'm going to add in a construction line or center line here that's going to be perfectly vertical. Again, this is a reference line that I'm going to make an angle between here and here of 30 degrees. Okay, so we're getting some things shifting the way they're supposed to. Um, from this point here, basically this whole back line is going to be a length of 96. Okay, that's the 96. It's from that, that point right there. Um, but then I'm going to have to do a line, another or center line off of this, like so. But I'm going to make this line, control key, parallel with this line down here. So I'm going to make a parallel relationship there. Okay. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to bump out. So I'm going to turn my line tool on briefly here. I'm going to kind of come out. I'm going to go up. I'm going to go back in. Okay. Now what I want to do is make sure that this line here, that is perpendicular, that should be, that should be it. So I was going to say, just to make sure that it was parallel, you could add that in there just to make sure that it lines up. I'm going to trim off that piece right there. Okay. That's all a bump out. I totally forgot about that. Okay. Now, there's a dimension to the center point right here to this line, a distance of 51 millimeters. So I'm going to take and measure from this line here. I'm going to kind of, kind of get really close and hover. And then I'm going to lock onto that point right there. Left click and pull out. That will be 51. Okay, so there's, there's that dimension there. Now. I'm going to go from there. I need to make this uh, from this midpoint here to here is going to be 8.7. And the length of this line here, I'm going to make it 17.42. I'm going to do the bottom number, okay, because you see that is a stacked dimension. Oh, it's already defined. Okay, that's fine. We'll just leave it at that. That's okay. I'll change that so you guys can see it in two decimal places. Okay, so 18.7. Uh, the height of this or the thickness of this will be 5 millimeters from here to here. That will be 5. Okay. Um, I'm just trying to think of what else I need here. 5, 14, 96. That's good there. Um, and then, oh, the height of this front face from here to where it begins to bend right here at this corner is from the front view. This is going to be 45 millimeters. Okay, that's 45 millimeters. Um, the height of this piece right here where the cut is, again from the front view, will be 27. Okay, I'm going to bring the 45 in a little bit tighter so you guys can see this. And at this point, this fully defines. Okay. Now, once you have all that, I'm going to go ahead and extrude this out a distance of 133 millimeters. Okay, now again, I don't care which way it goes. You can do a midplane, you can do one way, you can do another way. It's up to you because we're going to place the origins anyways. Now, I'm just going to stay safe. I'm going to put this into a midplane and put 133 in there. Okay, just kind of keep everything right in the middle. Hit my check mark. Now, obviously, I don't want this to stay blue. This is made of brass, so I'm going to right click on my material. Edit material, <laughs> copper alloys, brass, apply, and close. Now, I'm going to quickly do a control save. I'm going to put this on my desktop. I'm going to call this caps lock, my cam bracket, underscore my last name. Now, you should be putting that obviously in your H drive. Okay. Now, I've got the rough shape here. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to highlight the, this face, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to start a new sketch there, spacebar normal two, and I'm going to start with a corner rectangle. I'm going to draw a rectangle like so. It's going to be right to this line. That rectangle will be 39 millimeters in width, okay? But I'm not done yet. I'm also going to come over here and take my line tool, come over to this far corner. I'm going to draw an angle in. Vertical line straight down, 
attach to the corner and close this part. I'm going to add an angle measurement from here to this line where the bend is. That's going to be 30 degrees. And then this thickness from here to here is going to be 133 minus 108. So 25 millimeters. Okay, and I'm still not done. Okay, I'm going to add one more thing. Again, I'm trying to optimize or shorten the amount of branches I have in my design tree. So I'm going to try to do as many things as I can in one sketch. The next thing I'm going to do is draw my two slots. So I'm going to draw a slot here with a straight slot tool. Come right to the right of it, draw a second one. And now what I'm going to do is turn on my smart dimension. And using that auxiliary view, I will dimension this to the correct numbers here 38 okay uh, this is a radius of 7 okay I'll set those equal to each other in just a second from this point here to the edge whoop, that was dumb sorry to this edge will be 16 uh, this distance here will be 19 the distance from this center here to this center here will be 38 this distance here will be 19. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make this and this equal to each other. So now they're fully defined. So from an isometric view, this is what my sketches look like. Okay. Now you got to be careful. These two will cut through all, but this one's kind of right in the middle. So what I'm going to do is I need to do a uh, extruded cut through all both to make this work. So I'm going to go to my features and do an extruded cut. I'm going to drop it to through all both. Okay, it's not going to hurt to go either way both ways. Hit my check mark, and now there is the rough shape of my part. Okay, so step number two, got quite a bit done. We're probably about 75% done with this part in two steps. I'm going to do a control save, just to make sure I don't lose this. Now, from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here on this front face, sketch, spacebar, normal two. Turn on my circle tool and draw a simple circle right here in the middle. Looking at my front view, I'm going to dimension from the edge to here is 35 plus 12, which is 47. I am going to dimension this. I'm going to stay consistent. I'm going to use the bottom numbers today. So I'm going to do 12.68 millimeters. And then the height of this is going to be from here to this line will be 14. All right, now this one's going to punch all the way through. If you look at the uh, right side view, you see all the holes are going through all. So I'm going to go to Features, Screw to Cut, just making sure I'm going the right direction. I'm going to take a through all cut. Okay, so there's that other piece there. I'm going to do a hole in the <coughs> excuse me right hand side here. Sketch, space bar normal two. Now, the nice thing is, my origin's right where I had the original circle, so I'm just going to go right here, draw me a second circle, make it a diameter of 10. Now, this one has a 10 with a down arrow of 15, telling me I need to cut this, extrude a cut, 15 millimeters into the part. Okay, so it's not all the way through. All right, I'm going to do a control save. Now, I'm going to add in my hole wizard. So I'm going to go to Features, Hole Wizard. Now we got to remember, these holes, you got to tell when you look at this part, you should be able to tell what type of holes these are by just looking at them. I see a dash line going around the outside. That immediately tells me I have a tapped hole. Okay, and you can look at the symbols of the tapped hole, because here is a symbol right here, tapped hole. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and reset all mine. I'm going to come in here and reset everything. Oh, actually, I don't have to. Uh, this is going to be actually an ANSI metric. Okay, so I'm going to drop this from ANSI inch to ANSI metric. Uh, it's going to be a bottoming tapped hole. I'm just going to do a tapped hole because these are going all the way through. The size on these, there's no custom sizing because it tells me it's an M10 by 1.5. So I'm going to drop this down, look for my M10 by 1.5, and left click. Okay, up to next, I'm going to change that to through all. We're punching these things through. 
Make sure none of these near side or far side countersinks are checked on. Those should be both empty. Then I'm going to go to my Positions tab. This is Select the Face. I'm going to pick on this face here. I'm going to throw one to the left and one to the right. Hit Escape one time. Do my Space Bar and go in Normal 2. Turning on my Smart Dimension. I'm going to dimension from here to the, uh, this edge here will be 12. And then from this one here to this one here is 35 plus 35, which is 70 millimeters. Okay, the height from here to here will be 14. I'm going to make sure I add a horizontal relationship between these two. And now I see that they're both fully defined. All I have to do at this point is hit my check mark. And at that point, the part is almost done. I have two more things to do. But before I do it, I'm going to do a quick Control S for saving. Okay, now at this point, all I have to do is add my fillets. But if you recall in our earlier discussion, I talked about we have to go through. And if we look at my original um, pieces, where did it go? Oh, it's over here under this. If you look at the original, I may have closed a journal here. Okay, remember, I, uh, these are all like locked on corners. So i got to add these in first, and then we're going to come back and we'll fill everything at the end. So I'm going to add system one to the left, then two, then three in the lower corner. Okay, so going back into my SOLIDWORKS, I'm going to go to my Features, Reference Geometry, Coordinate System. I'm going to put number one right here. Now, in that view, if you go back into that, that part again, okay, Z is coming out of the paper, Y is going up, and X is going to my right. So let's verify that is correct. Z is coming out, Y is going up, X is going to my right. That tells me this is good. So I'm going to hit my check mark. So there's coordinate system 1. Now I want to see my coordinate systems. So I'm going to go up here to the flyout menu above. I'm going to take and drop the arrow next to the eye here, and I'm going to turn my coordinate systems on. Okay, that way I can see it. So there's coordinate system number one. Now, features, reference geometry, coordinate system. Number two is going to lock right there in that corner. Okay, green is going up, which is Y. X is going to my right. Z is coming out of the screen. I know that is good, so I'm going to hit my check mark for coordinate system number two. I'm going to do one more time. Reference geometry, coordinate system. And again, I'm going to put this in the bottom corner, like so, okay, with X going to my right, Z is coming out, Y is going up. And I'll hit my check mark. Okay, so there are my three coordinate systems. Now, the last thing we have to add in here is our fillets, or are our fillets. And it says in the note here, and I want you to make a peek of that, all fillets and rounds are radius of three. Okay, so I'm going to turn on my fillet tool, feature. Make sure my fillets are all at three millimeters. And then we're going to fill up the following edges. So I'm just going to kind of rotate around. Let's start here in this corner here. This corner over here. Okay, I'm going to come into here. I got a fillets all the way on this back edge. On this back edge here. On that edge there. That's also rounded. And basically I'm just going all the way around. I don't want to hit the face because then I'll round out the holes too. This back edge here, that back edge there. Okay, so we're just going to do the same thing on the other side. This edge here is also rounded. And then we're going to go to this side. Same thing. Okay, I'm going to hit this edge right here. All right, this edge over here. This edge here. And this edge here. Okay, this cut back block here there's no rounds to it it's completely square okay same with this front face all right so those are my fillet areas all right so now at this point I will hit my check mark just to help out I'm going to add a little color here so you can just verify one more time that you have your fillets in the right spots so I'm going to add color I'll rotate this around and let you look at it real briefly and then we're going to call this one good okay so now here's all the fillets Oh, actually, I messed up. Go back. See, this is why it helps to color them in. I forgot about this corner up here and this corner up here. Okay, so if I get that, 
Now this is what it should look like. Okay. At this point, you need to go in and find the mass of this. Now remember, when you do your center of mass or looking for your center of mass, you don't want to forget to change your coordinate systems, how to choose them. So again, if I go and evaluate mass properties, remember to change your center of mass, you must drop it to each one of these coordinate systems. Okay, so you got to go from default to coordinate system 1, then to coordinate system 2, then to coordinate system 3. Okay, once you have that, I want you to put all your answers into the assessment attached to Schoology and get that submitted in um, and then get this drawing completed. Okay, I'm not going to do the drawing on this one just because we've done auxiliary reviews already. I like to see that you can do it on your own. With that said, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Otherwise, good luck. See you in class.